Hello and welcome to this installment of Mantis Hacks. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the modifications I made to the giant Lego 3D printed go-kart. And the modifications made it radio controlled. There's the steering. And there's the power. I'm going to start by taking a look at an overview of the system and then uh, disassemble the go-kart and take a look at the RC functions piece by piece. Okay, so we've got the battery box over here and power coming out of the battery box via this uh, yellow connector there. That goes into uh, the back of this connector on this main motor. This is the drive motor, which comes down via a pulley to the back wheels. Uh, and then there's some other cables coming out of here, which is power and signal. And there you go to the front servo motor here, which is again one of these funky Lego connectors. And uh, also you've got the antenna here, which isn't really being used at the moment. But the idea was that the antenna, there's two signals, a drive and turn signal. And they were supposed to come from this receiver inside of the antenna, buried in there. Uh, but the receiver broke, so it was a cheap orange receiver. So I had to put this one on temporarily which is a bit of a mess, uh, but it would have looked much better had that have worked. So what I'm gonna do is take all of this gear off, all of the extra stuff, the motors and the battery box and what have you, lay it out on the bench so we can take a look at it in uh, closer detail. Uh, whilst I'm at this stage, I might as well just talk through some of the physical modifications I had to make. So the front motor, what I did to get that connected is uh, basically this wouldn't really line up very well with this with the cog that's already on there that way round. So what I had to do is sling it round the other way and put another cog on the bottom here to line all of this up. And then it kind of sat quite nicely. Um, so I added a couple of blocks on here and these have actually got uh, bearings inside of them. There you go, there's a proper bearing. So this is a modified Lego block uh, which takes a bearing. Uh, and the same there, there's one in this one, there's a bearing on the front there as well. So this. This has got a nice bearing action on it. And then on the back end, uh, what I had to do is um, I added, let me take this off. I added these uh, one by four Lego bricks here. And these have got bearings on on either side, inside of there, and they're just pinned in place. It's fixed at the front there. And then this holds all of that together. Uh, I've stepped the wheels out a bit. So actually if I pull the axle out, uh, on both sides and the reason was to add that uh, T5 pulley there and then to make it uh, to join the drive shafts together I just printed one of these pieces up which basically takes the shaft in from either side. To be honest uh, the drive shafts are a little short and they only really just catch on that. There's no, I should have printed longer shafts on here probably a seven this is a six uh, but it was enough just to do these tests. If I lift that up you can probably see one of the bearings in there and also on the outside another bearing so there's twin bearings through each part on the axles uh yes one other modification i did if i take the front wheel off I reprinted these uh front uh, steering arms and also they've also got bearings inside of them there's the main drive motor and there's the steering motor All right, I'm gonna start by taking a look at the simplest bit, just the battery box. It's Lego connector on the top there, which is just like a little one round Lego block that I made. Um, and I've been using these uh, quarter inch jack plugs, which are anything but ideal for sending power through, but uh, they looked quite good size wise when it came to making the, uh, the little proper Lego connectors on the back. And the battery box basically, just houses a, a LiPo battery uh, and also a fuse switch. This is a 16 amp fuse switch. Uh, and the reason why I've added a fuse in there was because a lot of these um, pins are actually, when you come out of here, they go live at the other end. So you've actually got metal contactors which are live in a LiPo battery, kind of dangerous. Okay, so I've just released the, uh, the bolts on the top here. And there's the two nuts that have fallen out from the bottom side of the print. Uh, so I can now take the top off like so and you'll see that the uh, the jack connectors were just clamped in place 
uh, and you have the shape of the jack printed into the 3D uh, print there so that they, uh, they fit really snug and they don't move around. Once you have the two parts clipped together, they're not going to go anywhere. Um, I also leave the, um, the jack slightly open. This, there's a little bit of a gap there and there's a tiny uh, lip on the edge which also helps uh, keep them in position. So put them down like so, top back on and basically bolt it up and it's clamped nice and secure and it kind of looks like an old style Lego connector. So I was quite pleased with that. So here's the main drive motor. Uh, as I say, it's looking a bit of a mess with this receiver hanging out the back. It should have looked a lot better because it was supposed to have, um, there you go, there's a receiver inside of there, tucked down inside of that antenna. I don't think I can get it out. Well, maybe I can, there we go. So there's a little orange receiver inside of that and that was supposed to plug straight down onto there with those connectors hidden. Um, but the receiver broke on the day, so I had to dump that and uh, plug this in temporarily. Yeah, so the motor construction basically is built out of uh, three main parts. Um, there's the case, the main case body here. Got uh, a front end here, this plate which is holding this uh, the main um, motor and assembly in. I'll take this all apart in a minute. And then the back end here as well, and is that the, in fact there's another block here which is bolted to here. Um, again, so for this is all the electrical connections inside of that. And the way the motor comes apart is basically I've got uh, two of these pips at the front and the back here, which are, these ones are screwed and glued, but these ones are bolted. And also underneath, there's two here that are bolted. And what happens is there's some flanges that come in from this front face onto these uh, three here and that holds the whole thing in place. If I undo these a minute, you'll soon see what I mean. I'll just take these pits off. This one. Like so, and then the whole of that comes out. You've got this front plate for printed and uh, with like a generic standoff because I tried various different forms of motors and uh, and uh, I had the DC um, geared motors and all sorts originally, but I ended up going with these um, powerful, uh, this is an SK3 3548, and an aero drive uh, brushless motor. I think this is about uh, four or 500 watts, so it's a fairly powerful piece. So I printed this front part up with, off with these standoffs on it, and then you could add a plate to fit various motors that just gets bolted on. Uh, so you can change the motor arrangement if needed. The shaft, the output shaft, is basically using one of their collets. I'll go into some detail in that in a minute. I'll take this off and uh, and take this assembly apart so you can see how that works. Uh, and this is just a little uh, turbine fan I put on the back to try and push some air over the motor uh, whilst it was running. Okay. It's fairly uh, crude in here at the moment. You've got power coming in, uh, which is going to this terminal block, which is powering the uh, little um, uh, ESC here, which is an ATM car ESC. The signal coming in through the receiver, one of them comes into the, uh, the car ESC. The other one goes straight out of this socket here, which uh, goes off to the other motor, to the servo motor via the, uh, the wiring loom. Uh, there's some little standoffs here, which will take an Arduino. And this whole back piece comes off with these four screws here. So you can get to this to wire it up and put the, uh, the chassis mount sockets in. So there was another connection here, which just I uh, just unplugged from that main loom. And basically that's a fan. So inside of the motor, you can see in there, I have this fan, a captive fan there, which is like a little 40 millimeter um, actual fan. And what I've done in the print is I've put under there, there we go, there's the fan uh, outlet holes tucked away underneath. And on the other side of the print, there's some inlet holes. And that, so basically that fan run, runs continuously and just draws air in across and out the other side, just to keep everything cool inside of the motor housing. Um, and this is printed as a single piece uh, with no support. So that would have been printed that way up on the printer. So that's all done on the TAS 5 or the TAS 6, I can't remember. I was on my TAS 5 actually, because this would have been done in my heated chamber, because this is all ABS. So let's just go back and take a closer look at this, uh, this motor, the drive motor. 
basically this shaft takes quite a lot of load down when the belt's tensioned up on it and uh, the way I've got around uh, not bending this, uh, putting too much load on the bearing that's inside the motor here is I've put another bearing back here, a large bearing that's basically the same size as the shaft and in this case it's a um, 25 mil shaft on this. Um, so there's a front bearing here and a back bearing in the motor uh, so that helps keep that shaft from bending. Uh, and the way that it's held on is I ended up using part of the kit that comes with these motors which is to mount a prop. Uh, I'll see if I can get it off a minute. It can be a little bit tricky but uh, when this is inside that and then the M3 bolt goes inside there basically when you tighten up the bolt it clamps that collet up on the output shaft of the motor. Um, for some reason that collet's got a little bit too tight and isn't releasing but there you go it's popped out now. Uh, so that's the principle of how that all stays together. Might as well take the, uh, the motor off just to show you how this last part is assembled. There we go, it's nice and easy to see that bearing now. Let's just push fit into the 3D print. And this is the motor plate and there's a couple of uh, countersunk bolts in there that's holding that um, outrunner motor in place. So the nice thing about this system is when I tried different motors, I just uh, if the mounting options change, then I just reprinted this front plate, which got bolted on, so I don't have to keep reprinting this part each time. All right, next let's take a look at the uh, the front motor, which is effectively operating like a servo motor. Start by taking the back off, um, because that's where the uh, electronics are and what we have in here is basically uh, an Arduino with a monster moto shield on the back uh, what we've got is power coming in and a signal uh, and the signals coming in there and going into our Arduino and uh, basically the Arduino is just reading an RC PWM signal and converting that to a position uh, for the motor to be in and we've got a feedback coming back from the motor here, which is via potentiometer, and I'll open that and show you in a minute. And then there's our drive signal out of our moto shield here. And there you go, there's the Arduino mounted onto those posts that I had in the 3D print. And to wire this up, obviously I uh, take the Arduino off, and then there's four screws that release this part, so it's much easier to wire up. Let's take the front off. Okay. So again, it's a similar setup to the last one. Uh, the only difference is that this one is actually running a five volt fan inside. So I've actually used uh, five volts off of the feedback potentiometer for simplicity. Um, but it's otherwise the same. It's got the same uh, fan inside of it uh, for cooling. So it's drawing air in through those vents and pushing them back, pushing air out across these vents here just to keep all the internals cool. Effectively what I've got on here is uh, I've got one of this the small DC uh, 12 volt motor. It's got a 264 to 1 gearbox on it. Uh, so it's fairly torquey, uh, fairly slow, but that doesn't really matter for what we're doing. And then I've got a standard Lego output shaft attached to it. So you can get that off. So you can put on any kind of uh, uh, Lego scale cog. Again, there's a bearing in the front of this plate. There it is, it's just popped out. And this is actually a 24 mil bearing because uh, these shafts, when they're scaled, are about 24 millimeters. Uh, so there's a 24 mil bearing on there, which sits in the front of the uh, mounting plate. So that gives that a nice, uh, a nice bearing surface to work off of. And then what I've done is I've actually 3D printed this uh, 2.5 uh, toothed pulley onto the back end of the shaft and then I've got this uh, pulley attached onto my feedback potentiometer here so they're tied together with that belt a simple way of tensioning the belt up because we don't really need to transfer much torque through this at all all I've done is uh, the pulley mount is is mounted off of a single bolt here so you can undo that bolt and you can move this pulley up and down 
and that uh, gives you a way of simply tensioning that belt up. And so the way that the um, this uh, output shaft is attached to the motor shaft, uh, on this one it's slightly different actually, and so I'm just going to take this apart to show you how this one works. It's a slightly simpler arrangement. So I'm just going to back that screw out, and that just releases that uh, that pulley. It's nice and loose now, so the pulley can come off. So one of the biggest issues is trying to transfer a lot of torque into a plastic output shaft, uh, especially when the output of this gearbox, uh, the output shaft on the gearbox, I think is five millimetre, uh, maybe six with a flat on it. Um, so it's really hard to get that into this, uh, and all that torque through that tiny shaft. So what I've done here is I've used a, a 12 mil hex, hexagonal output adapter, and that's got a double grub onto the shaft out on the output of this gearbox. And then I've uh, done this 3D print with that same 12 mil hexagonal spacer on the inside. Uh, so the whole thing pushes tight down over that hexagonal spacer. So now you've got a really good uh, way of transferring all that torque into this plastic. Uh, and then the M4 bolt basically goes down through the end uh, and there's a tap, uh, the, the end of this uh, hexagonal output um, adapter is tapped to M4. So that holds the whole thing in place and stops it from sliding off the, off of the shaft. Uh, and this hasn't slipped at all since I've been using it, so that's a really good solution for that. Well, I hope you enjoyed that technical breakdown of the uh, Giant Lego RC Go-Kart. I'll be releasing the files on my Thingiverse account soon for the Lego motors, so you can make your own version of those. And if you haven't seen any of my other giant Lego builds, do make sure to check them out. I'll leave all the links in the description. Don't forget to check out my other projects on the YouTube channel and facebook.com forward slash Mantis Robot. You can also follow me on Twitter at Mantis Robot or Instagram. And don't forget to check the description section for further information on materials and printers that I use and also links to other videos.